This week, I open the floodgates. Proof that pets can be ghosts with this story-filled episode. So let's just do this. The following was posted by Sharon C. on the Ghost Walks Facebook fan page. When I was growing up, we had a white cat named, wait for it, Snowball. We got her as a kitten and she lived for 16 years. She hated closed doors, especially the bedroom doors. She would scratch and bang on them until you got up to let her in. Shortly after she died, I was home on leave by myself. I went to bed that night and closed the bedroom door. Just as I was falling asleep, the scratching and the banging on my door started. Half asleep, I instinctively got up to open it and let her in. I got back into bed and felt a soft pounce on the foot of the bed and then the pressure of something lying there. I thought, it's just the cat, and then remembered we didn't have her anymore. In the morning, I found clumps of white cat hair on the covers where she laid down. I believe she was with me one last time. Now that is a wonderful story. I actually posted on the Ghost Walks fan page, this is where this story came from. I asked people to share their pet ghost stories and uh, quite a few, quite a few people posted under there. I, I, there's not, not too much engagement these days i'm not sure why it's a little bit uh been a bit slow but seriously though i mean it was like opening floodgates when you start asking people about pet ghost stories i wasn't too sure when i was thinking of the concept of this episode but my mind was put at ease quite quickly because i did some posts on the uh, ghost guy daniel page i did uh, the posts on the ghost walks page and it just didn't get tiresome and i and thank you so much if you posted your story i was very happy to read it so the common occurrence when it comes to pet ghosts is still feeling the habit so things that you got used to uh, when your beloved pet was still alive Uh, The feelings of having a cat rub against your leg or, as with the story I just told you, feeling the animal hop up on your bed to sleep. These things don't go away. Now, the, the idea of the bed is the interesting one. Now, some might say this is just muscle memory that you're feeling it kind of like the phantom buzz of a cell phone in your pocket, even when the cell phone isn't there, (laughs) that you feel it because you're used to it. And in some senses, that may be true. Like if you felt the animal rub against your leg, for example. But when it comes to the bed, this is the interesting one for me personally. Now, I've talked about it before. You can have a conscious ghost. You can have a uh, residual energy that's just basically like a loop playing over and over again. This is what I believe. That when you're at your most shut down, uh, let me explain. So in reality, in day-to-day life, we go through the motions. Uh, We see reality in a certain way. If we're skeptical, we don't believe in psychic abilities, we don't believe in ghosts. And when the waking mind is perceiving that reality, you don't have any experiences, whether you believe or not, in the sense that um, we are at our most psychic when you shut down that logical part. So what I'm seeing physically and the material in front of me is not what makes psychic ability Uh, It's more on a spiritual level. It's the same thing with, I've talked about in the past, out-of-body experiences that you have to be in kind of a half-sleep, half-wake state to have this occur. I don't know what you believe when it comes to where we go when we're sleeping, you know, what dreams are, if it's all just in the head or if there's some spiritual element to that. I don't know. But what I do know is that Either in meditation for me, and if you meditate, I think you understand this too, 
or in that state of half awake, half asleep, I can get the most impressions on a psychic and spiritual level. That's for me as a non-psychic, a very, very, very non-psychic that getting back to the idea of feeling the animal hop up under the bed, well, this is when you're in that half-wake, half-asleep moment. Some people may say it could have been a dream. Skeptics might say to you, oh, you were just dreaming. But when I I read through this story uh, from Sharon, I, I don't get that feeling. You know, she actually got up out of bed and she opened the door and she felt like this, she was awake. Like this wasn't sleepwalking. Like she was actually awake. Half asleep, mind you, but also awake. So that kind of proves what I'm, what I'm saying here. So if you connect to the world on a spiritual level, where your body is asleep or shut down, then you have more of these types of experiences with energy. So this is another reason why pets can be ghosts. Now, I'm not going to dive too far into this idea. I um, grew up in the uh, Roman Catholic religion, and one of the things that we've learned in relation to the Bible is that uh, pets don't go to heaven. That's what it says somewhere in there. I couldn't give you the exact quote, but that's the, that was the teaching, that uh, animals don't go to heaven. And, you know, that I, I think can carry over for some people into the idea of ghosts. But again, this isn't true because everything around us is made up of a certain level of energy. And I do believe that living beings, such as humans and animals, have more of this. Animals have feelings. They can have these emotional bursts that draw in and create more energy. So... Me putting out the call and getting all these stories was, was, yes, proof to me, but I already believed in the beginning. So in the end, this is kind of a quick one, a quick speech, is yes, that uh, pet ghosts do exist. And if anything, these stories have proven it. As I mentioned, this is a story-filled episode, and I have uh, one for you here. It's from the Mercury News It was an experience from a woman named Alice. Now, again, all these stories that I've chosen are ones that resonate with me. Uh, When I read them, they, 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 you know, give me some type of emotion, some type of reaction. So these are the ones I'm sharing. But these ones I'm sharing are definitely not the only ones. So I I, um, I plead with you that you should go to Google and do a search for uh, ghost stories about pets or pet ghost stories and just read the sheer amount that comes through it will be well worth your time so this one was from alice from the mercury news website one time when my husband was in the bedroom he swore he heard oscar bark his very deep loud bark in the living room only to find that the room was empty another time we both heard his nails clicking on the hardwood floors in the entryway and of course there was nothing there When Oscar was alive, he used to come in very early into the master bedroom and sigh very loudly to let me know he was up and that he was hungry. When I heard it again, it really frightened me, so I shouted, Oscar, you're scaring mummy. Please wait for me in heaven. After that, we never heard from him again. Now, it's only fitting that the what's claimed to be the oldest ghost story in American history is about a dog. So this is known as the Blue Dog Legend, and I uh, found it. The writing was done by the people at Roscoe's Bed and Bark. Now this is, uh, definitely look this up. This is, I guess, a bed and breakfast where you can bring your dog. It really looks cool. So if you're into that, definitely support them. The Blue Dog Legend. Said to be the oldest ghost story in American history, the legend of Blue Dog dates back to the 1700s in Port Tobacco, Maryland. Here, legend has it that late one night, a man named Charles Thomas Sims entered a tavern with his faithful hound, Blue Dog. Sims proceeded to brag to the locals about his wealth and gold and ownership 
of a deed to a rather large estate. After a long night of drinking, Sims and his dog departed only to be stalked by a man named Henry Hannes, who wanted to rob Sims of his gold. A fight ensued on Rose Hill Road, and ultimately both Sims and Blue Dog were killed. Hannes then buried Sims' gold under a large holly tree on the same road, where he planned to retrieve it once the dust had settled. However, when he returned to the tree some three days later, he was scared off by the ghost of Blue Dog, who had returned to protect his master's treasure. To this day, the locals say that every February 8th, on the anniversary of the robbery, Blue Dog can be heard howling by the tree, waiting for his master to return for his treasure. Now that's a loyal dog. Very well written. Again, these are the folks at Roscoe's Bed and Bark, located in uh, Portland, Maine. That's uh, proof enough for me. They jumped all the way to Maryland for this story. I mean, that uh, means it must stand out. Now, the following stories is what I've been teasing. This is in regards to the black cat of Hamilton's Custom House. If you haven't heard about me, uh, heard me talk about this place in the past, then uh, you are missing out. I do a, do some Google searches. You'll come up with some information. This place definitely, hands down, was the most haunted place that I've personally dealt with in my in my paranormal travels over the years course it is in my hometown so i might be a little uh, jaded when it comes to it but it was almost like you could guarantee that something was going to happen to people every time we went out there for tours and we also did public ghost hunts in the building and it was just amazing the amount of energy legend and stories that surrounded this place it personally floored me I absolutely uh, loved doing the events here, loved doing the walks personally, leading the tours personally, having experiences and uh, experiences with witnesses so that, you know, basically the ghosts were reaching out. They just weren't showing themselves to us. They were also showing themselves to anybody who was willing to see. So needless to say, I could go on for hours about the custom house in Hamilton, but I need to focus my efforts right here. I'm going to be talking about specific to the theme of the show. Try not to get off topic. The theme of the show is about pets. So inside the custom house, it was very well known that one of the main ghosts of the building was a black cat. They had seen it around the grand staircase. So if you walk in the front door and you go into the foyer... If you look around on the left side, there would be the entrance to the gift shop and the desk where you could check in for the museum. It's the Workers' Arts and Heritage Museum. And then on the right-hand side is this beautiful wooden original staircase, the grand staircase. So the cat had been seen around there on a couple occasions. The first one I want to mention goes back to the time that the building was used as a karate dojo. The man's name was Don Warner. He is a believer in the main ghost of the building, the Dark Lady. But his assistant was also a believer in the cat ghost. Her name was Annette. Now, when people talked about Annette working in that old building, they would call her the ghost magnet. Because anything that would happen to anybody inside the custom house when they were there always happened to her. It was almost like they were seeking her out for some reason. Uh, one day she's uh, coming inside the building and she was alone. She heard a disembodied voice from the distance telling her to get out. Thankfully, she didn't listen. The karate jo the dojo was there for a bit. But she didn't expect something to happen on a bright and sunny afternoon. Now, while leaving the building through the foyer, it's the end of the day. She had closed down mostly everything, but the one thing she had forgotten is a window beside the staircase. 
So as she's walking out, if you look to the left, there's the stairs, and beyond the stairs is a window. They would open the shutters on that window to let in some natural light. Uh, looked very nice. And she had forgotten to close the shutters, so the light was shining through from the sun, and she noticed the shadow moving back and forth. Now, she, as she went up to the window pane, she was shocked. There was a cat inside the window pane. Now, here we have two windows. It's not like a house where the inside window is a screen and the outside window is glass. With these old buildings, you had to make sure that you kept in as much heat and cooling as possible because it could leak out. So they had two glass windows, one on the outside, one on the inside. And in between, you might have maybe three quarters of a foot of space. So this black cat was kind of moving forward and backwards between the two window panes. She touched the glass. The cat was stuck between them. Now, Annette panics. She's an animal lover. The first thing she tries to do is open the window, but here's the thing. It's been nailed shut for years. So she starts calling out for help, but nobody comes. And she thinks, the only way I can free it is to break the glass. So she brings her arm back. She's about to smash her elbow into the glass. And as she brings it forward, the cat slowly disappears in front of her. Now, many people who don't believe in the idea of animal spirits, how would they explain such an experience other than to say that it, it never happened? But that wasn't the only one. So this is where you get some validity into the stories, is when you find out there are multiple experiences with the same cat. And this happened to one of our tour guides. Ghost Guide James was standing on the staircase. He was telling the story of the cat, with Annette coming to the window pane to try and save it. And a lady in the front of the tour interrupts him. She yells, James, it's behind you. Now, I think she could have probably chosen her words a little bit better in that situation, because the last thing you want to hear, poor James, inside of a haunted building is, it's behind you. So he freaks out just a little bit, but dedicated to the paranormal as much as James was, he spun to see on the stairway this black blob sitting there. It looked like a cat. And then it took off and ran up to the second floor. Now at this point, James, he is completely dedicated to what's going to happen upstairs. And, you know, his curiosity is much more important than his fear. So he hands the lantern to the woman who called out and runs up to the second floor. And when you get up there, there's a landing and you're met by two closed, um, I guess you could call them fire doors. They're kind of like the steel doors that close on their own uh, with the latches to make sure you have to use the handle to open it. So he's met by the two closed doors and no cat. Now this is uh, the strange part because there's about 20 people in the foyer downstairs and he yells down, did the cat jump down? Did the cat run by you? And all 20 people agreed they had not seen it come down. Obviously, cats don't have thumbs, so it didn't open the door and escape into the hallway. It just vanished. So two times the black cat has been seen and disappeared. And I know for a fact, even though I don't have those stories for you right this moment, that these are the only times. The black cat of the custom house has been seen, and I like to think in the back of my mind, is still being seen to this very day. Okay, thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Again, if you are enjoying these, please spread the word. I'd like to uh, get as many listeners coming out as possible as I head down this road, as I learn how to entertain you and uh, how to best master this medium as a way to spread the news that ghost stories are real and awesome. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.